Since the revolution started in Syria, the mass atrocities, the killings, the detention, the torture, was statistics, was news to the outer world. The Syrians who suffered are seeming like numbers, only numbers to the international community. Trying to give the numbers souls, names, and identity, it's, it, it gets this connection with, with people, this human connection. It's not only a number, it's a human being just like you. this thing we do in the detention, a group of five or six people gather together and they exchange the names and the phone numbers of each other to memorize them. So in case one of them went out, he can talk to the family and contact him and tell him about the situation and where is their son. But for me, it wasn't enough. Like I memorize five or six names and tell, and what about the others? I used to teach English for the detainees and they used to write their vocabularies or the grammar on pieces of clothes, scratching them with chicken bones. But it doesn't last long. So we were afraid that we may write all the names in this way, and when we smuggle out this shirt pieces, it would fade away and all our efforts and risk we took would be in vain. Suddenly, one of us said, I have an idea, and he took a piece of plastic bag and went to the bathroom area. He came back with a red liquid inside it. It was uh, blood he squeezed from his gum and spit it in that. We thought of mixing this blood with the rust from the steel bars in the ground. So it was like writing, like a real liquid, real ink. How we did it, like one of us go sit with a group, start a chat and try to memorize the names and come back to Nabil and tell him the names and the contacts and we write them. So we tried as much as possible to hide what we are doing. Finally, we gathered all the names. We wrote each one from which area. Like, for example, Ahmad from Homs, Sami from Aleppo. Now was the last step on how to hide those shirt pieces. So I thought that we could hide them in the Collars, like in the collar, inside the collar, but insert it and the cuffs. And the cuffs of the shirt. So we used the cheekbones to make holes in the cloth and put thread inside it and uh, put it around. We decided that the first one who will be called out will wear the shirt and contact the VDC, the Violation Documentation Center. It was me, I was the one who was called the first. And I just, when I heard my name, I just jumped to the shirt. And that was like after maybe uh, 20 days from when we finished that. And I wore the shirt <coughs> and went out with the names. When I went out, I wasn't thinking of anything else, even my freedom. I was just obsessed with the thing that I have the names. But what hurt me more that when I went out, I started to contact the families and telling them about their sons. And with all the work and evidence we have, we still got nothing. Those people who I left behind are still there. Do you know what goes on in that prison? Have you been there? No, I haven't been. I've been in the presidential palace, not okay. in the prison. So here no. you have a very disturbing report about something going on in yeah. one of your prisons. So, Are you going to investigate? So Amnesty National knows more about Syria than me, right. according to you. No, right. that's not true. No, they, they haven't been to Syria. They only base their reports on allegation. They can bring anyone, it doesn't matter what's his title. You can forge anything these days. And we're living in a fake news era, as you know. How does it feel when you think about it and talk about it now? Of course, it feels so bad. 
Do you feel angry? Do you feel I have upset? all the feelings. I feel angry, I feel depressed, I feel sad, I feel hopeless. I feel violated. 